uh, it is available for you afterwards. Um, as, a t as an attendance um, taking mechanism, please put your name and email address in the chat window so that we can share with you any updates directly in addition to our social media posts. And thank you for that. I'm going to go ahead and give this just another minute here before doing intros. And then we'll begin. Thanks, everybody. All right, since I'm going to repeat that in the um, intros, I'll go ahead and get started. As a reminder, again, we are recording. Hello and welcome. We'll uh, get started in terms of the content in just a few minutes. I'm Anne Missoni, and on behalf of the Society for Photographic, Photographic Education, who is hosting this event, welcome. We are a member-based organization, for those of you who aren't familiar, and I'll be dropping our website in the chat window momentarily. A few protocol reminders. Uh, the first um, is that as an attendance uh, taking mechanism, please put your name and email address in the chat window so that we can share with you any updates directly in addition to social media posts. We've started you all on mute and we ask that um, you do um, stay in mute um, until we get to uh, the uh, Q&A. Um, that way our presenters can have um, the floor uh, without uh, too much in the way of interference. Once uh, we wrap up presentations, please do stick around. Uh, we'll have an informal conversation um, and ask that you present your uh, questions at that time in the chat feature so that we can help facilitate the conversation. Um, and I will let you know when it's time for that. Um, we are, of course, establishing the way to move forward in this shifting time. And uh, we believe yeah, we'll be together. So without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce John. Hey everybody, uh, my name is John Fryer. I'm an Associate Professor of Cross-Disciplinary Media at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. And, um, you know, I wanna, we, we have a guest today um, uh, named Tom Mordard, who I'm gonna introduce in a few minutes. And he's a person that um, I have partnered with uh, over the last, I think almost five years or six years that I've been here. Uh, and he works for the VCU Alt Lab uh, and does uh, development for helping to support uh, teachers and educators with uh, adapting their courses to really use the tools and online tools, not necessarily uh, you know, shifting things online, but really maximizing the technologies that are available in a way that's open source uh, that's accessible, uh, that works. Uh, and, and what I really love about him is a pro he's a problem solver and, and like does not, you know, does not invest himself into multiple like different types of technology per se. He's not like, oh, you have to use this program or this is what we've adapted and this is what we're going to use. He's really been looking at uh, things that, that we can get affordably and use, and he's not, he's never suggested something that was, uh, uh, that I was unable to adapt and use for my own purposes. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, each of these, each of these episodes, um, I've kind of shared some of the things that we've been doing on the PhotoFico website. Uh, and the PhotoFico website is something that's been adapted from a course that I developed and co-taught with Tom. So um, when I introduce him, I just want to kind of set him up so you can see the kinds of stuff that he does. So I'm going to share somewhere here. All right, can you all see that? Great. So this is the front page of PhotoFica. Um, and again, if you're, if you're new to this, uh, the front page is essentially this missive that Betsy uh, posted to Facebook that, that really generated PhotoFica in the first place. And it's a suggestion for ways to adapt our courses to online stuff. I won't talk any more about that, except that it is available there as a resource. Um, the most important thing for the, the, the work that we've done in terms of Betsy, Ann, and I is that throughout PhotoFica, during these Q&As, we have been uh, 
actively keeping track of the questions and whatever we can't answer in person, we've been adding to a whole list of drop down resources. So if you're if you're if you're following along at home, if you go to photofica.org, all of the answers uh, and questions that you asked have been answered to, answered to our best of our, of our abilities. One thing that was mentioned a couple times during uh, Photofica is that, you know, while the resources that are available on on things like photography professors and the uh, f Facebook forums that we've been using to adapt our classes, it does become overload. So we're trying really hard to make a clean looking site that takes the best of those resources and makes them available. Um, the other thing that we have been doing with Photofica is we've been building a set of assignments. So our first guest that wasn't Anne or I, or Anne Betsy or I, uh, was Re Rebecca Modrak, uh, who set up this project called Window Serenade that now uh, there's, there's 20 or 30 different classes that are using this assignment and they're starting to post their pictures. So if I scroll down to the bottom of this, Tom recently set up the hashtag to pull images from Window Serenade. So uh, if you go to if you go to Window Serenade on um, that hashtag on Instagram, you'll start to see what people are posting. Um, and the last assignment that we posted uh, is Works Family, um, and this we just posted this this week. And Barbara Fallon, I think, is out there. Uh, she works with she's a director of Working Assumptions, and this is a project that has primarily been used uh, by high school age students, and they are making it accessible to us. And it from from the materials I've seen, it really looks fantastic. So take some time, go through the FAQ, take a look at some of the things that have been working on, and 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 you can be in contact with her, and uh, they can make things accessible to you. Um, and then we've been posting our workshops here. So I think the most recent episode is not this week's, but I will post it. Um, and then um, let's see, I've, I'm going to skip that because I've talked about it. Um, I'm going to go to the, the Photography is Magic site that Tom helped me build. And you're going to see it looks a lot like Photofica because that's what it was. I mean, so when this thing came about, um, I just, we just, the, the, our first of it, first version of Photofica was we all know dot photography is magic dot com. And, and, you know, we just built it as a stub of this and eventually registered Photofica. I don't know, and we don't know if, if, if this is going to persist after this crisis or not. So we don't want to make too much of an investment. We're really just trying to make it as, as useful to you as possible. Uh, but if you're, if you're looking for quick assignments, there's 12 of them listed here that Tom and I developed. And Tom is also a photographer. So it was really great to have him involved in this, both as a, uh, you know, as, as developing the way the course worked, but also, um, you know, he could relate. I, this was a class that we developed for non-majors and he's, he was really great about translating my, you know, sometimes esoteric art speech to things that the students that were non-majors could like grasp onto and 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 think about in ways that like I may not have been able to reach them in the in the way that I spoke about whatever assignments that I've made. So uh, you can look at that on your own time. John, and, I have a quick question. Yes. Will this be available as a resource after after this fall or the spring? Um, this class this class is just out there. It's okay. on. It's always on. Um, and I, you know, so yes. And okay. if, 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 if photography is magic moves anywhere in terms of if the course has changed, uh, we'll make a stub of this and have it be persistent and accessible. And the only thing I else I wanted to show you that Tom did, and, and this is one of the models for photography is magic is that he worked with, he consulted with somebody that created this project called Anth 101. And it's essentially like an anthropology 101 that started at, and Tom can tell you, I don't know what school it started at, but you can tell us. Where's Tom? Is he muted? Kansas State. So at Kansas State. But this is the thing where, uh, how many people are enrolled at any given time? Um, thousands. Mike thousands. West runs it. So if, if you are even tangentially involved with some of this stuff, Mike West is just like this amazing rock star magician guy in anthropology. So even if you're not interested in anthropology, definitely check out some of his videos. He's just an amazing, amazing person. 
Um, but he runs it at huge scales, both online, face-to-face, -face, blend it, and he opens it up to any university in addition to the ones that are running through Kansas State. So he's just, just a great guy. And I think with that, I'd like to just pass it over to Tom. So, you know, you might, I, I've mentioned Tom a number of times in Photofica because uh, he wrote this guide or helped write this guide, Keep On Teaching, which is linked, we, I linked to on the first page of Photofica uh, because uh, it was one of the first guides that came out during this transition. I think it came out within two or three days of the announcement of us transitioning to online classes. So we were all in the thick of this chaos and out came this guy that recommended some really, you know, really important things that we've emphasized here. Uh, and my favorite one that I mention all the time is like, you know, you want to support the student community, you want to stay calm, uh, you know, yeah, anyways, so Tom can, uh, Tom can talk a little bit more about that. And, and, you know, he's been consulting with not only our school, but, you know, uh, around the open education universe in terms of helping other people at other schools uh, do what we've been able to do here at VCU. So with that, I'm going to introduce Tom Woodard. And do you want the screen on, Tom, or do you just want to talk to us? Um, yeah, I, I think just talking is fine for now. Great, I, don't, I don't need to reference that one. Um, okay, great. Thanks. So I, I am, uh, I do work in Alt Lab at VCU, which stands for Academic Learning Transformation, for whatever that's worth. Um, just a small group of people who are, are focused on, on trying to do interesting things with technology. And that, like John said, that could be, you know, stuff that's online. It could be stuff that blends online and face-to-face. -face. Uh, it could be almost entirely face-to-face -face and then bridging stuff. And I think, uh, what I really like about being able to work with John as well as a number of other people at VCU is you find somebody who's passionate about their discipline, uh, who's excited to try things, uh, and then you just try and get problems out of their way. And, you know, depending on how your university is structured and what sort of resources they have, those people who, who want to do that, who want to help you do that, could live in different places. Um, like, there are innovation shops that sometimes do it. Sometimes there are people called, you know, instructional designers or learning designers who might be that for you. Sometimes they're technical people. Um, sometimes they're not. Like for, for, for instance, my background, uh, I'm a history undergrad with some weird uh, masters of liberal arts stuff and then an instructional technology background uh, who picked up programming rather late in life. So that's kind of how I come to it with, with an interest in a lot of different things, uh, including photography. But as I've gotten to work with really amazing people at VCU, I've gotten into like ornithology, uh, you know, pathometary warblers and things like that, that people are into at VCU, uh, some field botany stuff. Um, you know, it's just been really amazing to work with different faculty members in the School of Arts, in biology, in all sorts of things um, and you know just just try and figure out how to do things so I think if, if you can find the people in your university who are not so much interested like John said in saying you have to use this thing because we bought it right that's always a bad sign if the justification is we paid for this therefore you should use it that's generally a warner um, uh, but if you can find people who are like, what's your problem? How can we solve it? How can we make beautiful and interesting things that get done what you want? Like, I think those are good people who are gonna, gonna make your life better. Um, and, and I've always had the experience and Tom has said that like working with artists is, you know, their favorite part. Uh, so, you know, rather, he, I don't know, you said you liked working with the math department, but uh, sometimes you know it just with artists yeah we kind of said it before like if you can find somebody who cares a lot about both the students and their discipline like that's that tends to lead to interesting work you know you got some people who might care quite a bit about their discipline but don't care about the students or the experience you're trying to build and that for me tends to be um, more painful work and you know, like working with artists is often hard, as I'm sure you know from working with your colleagues sometimes, like strong opinions, 
lots of details, things like that, but they care about the outcome and the, and the thing that you're creating. And that's what I want. I'd rather have that, you know, lots of minutia and arguments about font or whatever, rather than disengagement and people saying, I don't want this. I don't really care, whatever, you know, the, the indifferent shrug of this course isn't really going to matter in a student's life. I had somebody say that to me one time. They're like, eh, you know, it's poli sci 101. It doesn't, you know, I don't want it to be life changing. It's just like a course someone's going to take. And so, you know, like it's, it's a position you can take and, and, you know, whatever, but it's, it's hard to do beautiful and interesting things that keep me going with people who come from, from that disposition. So one of the things that you and I talked about, Anne and, and Betsy, was, I mean, one of the focuses of last week was thinking about exhibitions. You know, all of our students have lost their exhibition space. There are, so there's a, lots of different strategies for, for you know, are we, are we going to move to online exhibitions? You know, are we going to borrow a platform some, from somebody else? Are we going to build 3D models? So can you talk a little bit about your perspective on what it would take for you to support somebody like us? Yeah, I think so like you start hard with that question of what are we really trying to replicate and, and can we do it online in a, can we do it justice in a purely online thing in a way that's even marginally accessible to most people. Um, we have lots of people who talk to us in a lot of variety of things about, you know, immersive 3D environments. And generally, that's going to take a fair amount of hardware and a fair amount of technology overhead and a, and a fair amount of bandwidth and processing power to even consume, let alone if you want some sort of immersive vibe or, or other kind of like full on goggles and, and controller paddles. And we've, we've done that. We've built things in those for certain purposes. I feel like in this particular environment, that's going to be hard to justify those resources and get them aligned fast enough. And then there's always going to be with, with technology environments that are that sophisticated, there's at least usually a big handoff between, you know, ordinarily in the students setting up their, their room or their wall or whatever, like that's a very much them doing it, almost a visceral connection to this physical space. When you do it through this 3D technology, there's almost no way for them to have that control or like the conveying of the information to a third party who will then put it up and it will then be consumed. Like that's, that's tricky stuff. That's tricky workflow stuff. Um, or somebody else is making that decision for them, even if it's in a 3d space. So it's, it's one of those things to think about. Um, and then it's like what I encourage people a lot of times to do is go, go to the place that that is amazing to you. Is there a museum that's doing online galleries really well? Is there, uh, you know, a professional society, anything? Is there an individual that has done this in a way that you think is amazing that might inspire people and use that to kind of help jumpstart the conversation? Say, I really like these two and say, I hate this one. You know, so like if you can get some like some some spectrum markers that can help people build and understand what you're trying to do a lot faster. And then it's trying to figure out like what's the workflow, who's doing it. Do you want students to have a certain amount of control and kind of getting their hands dirty and how much technology do they need to know to do that because that's the give and take here with all this stuff is what's the technology overhead. You know, what's your penalty in exchange for your freedom or control? Because we've built really simple things. One of the first Anthropology 101 sites was all about letting students submit um, works that were a little more complex than what they are now. Right now, it's tied into Instagram pretty directly. And I have mixed feelings about that just because of, you know, Facebook and privacy and all that sort of stuff. But in the bottom, line it was like Mike Wesh couldn't take the overhead of technical support for thousands of students and the university couldn't either so we went with a simpler platform that outsourced the technology support but it it, it constrained the students projects as well and you know that's that's the battle all the time and you know you can do some really creative things through in constraints and that's part of what what makes all this stuff interesting but it's you know, it's just the back and forth that you go through. 
And I would just say that, you know, Tom has been, you know, anytime I've worked with him um, and sent links, it, he, he takes it as a personal challenge to reverse engineer whatever it is you're pointing him to. So the site that he built and just sent me was for another colleague who decided to go with a proprietary uh, exhibition system, but their, their request to Tom was to replicate the way that MoMA displays artwork. So, uh, you know, in two days, he replicated the, the way that Mo MoMA represents artists' work and sent that to me as a, as a, as a WordPress template, uh, which he's willing to share with anybody. So if, if you're interested in that, we can, we can make it accessible to you. It's really a, just a really clean thing that has artist name, a little, a little blurb, and a, the ability to scroll. And it's really smart. It looks beautiful. Um, and then Tom, there was one thing before, because we're, we're, we're almost at time, is thinking about uh, issues of proprietary, you know, proprietary ownership and so on and so forth related to using things like Instagram and, and other places that have terms of service. Right. So that's, that's one thing I'd encourage, you know, I, I try and talk to with faculty and with any students is anytime you're putting something online, uh, particularly in any third party system, you're, you're trying to look through a couple different things. One, wh what are the terms of service with regarding uh, in, intellectual property and kind of the ownership of this stuff. So make sure you understand that when you're putting it on there. Um, and then you're going through a couple other things generally. One, you know, my general caveat is beware of any freemium system. You know, it's free here or for X number of days or for now um, because of those have never worked out well for, for me long-term. I've lost lots of stuff or, you know, the bad things have happened in a variety of ways there for me. Uh, and then secondly, like, can you get your stuff out? If you invest a lot of time and energy in building within whatever platform it is, when you export it out, assuming you even can, what does that look like? And can you get it someplace else? Or is that work just lost? And in, in some cases, you're okay with that. In some cases, you aren't. Just know going in that those are at least three things you want to look at really hard. Um, for before suggesting someone else use a system or you engage in one yourself. Thanks so much, Tom. Yes, Those are, you're making so many excellent points about communicating with, with IT. My school at, at ASU, they're called instructional designers. And I, I just feel like in five minutes, I could have saved a lot of time over the past three years. Um, and, Maybe we can bullet point some of the some of the particularly salient points because thank you really, really useful stuff. Thank you. Yeah, and as john said we build most of our stuff in WordPress, we also build some stuff kind of entwined with Google Docs and scripts and things and we put it all on GitHub so it is all free it's open source that's how we license all of our stuff. Um, so anything we make is available and free and I'm happy to happy to see people use it. Great. Well, Anne and Betsy. All right. I have a, a rant. It's not a rant. It's, um, did, you know, I was thinking and I don't want to think about think make an analogy to this, but I can't help it that Andy Rooney at the end of 60 minutes, if I'm not totally dating myself right now. I mean, I usually didn't even completely agree with it, but I have this moment where I, some things have come up this week um, that have made me think a lot about uh, political implications, about fear, about the future. And I just wanna talk about this really quickly in relation to how we're thinking as photo educators and artists as we start to move forward and put this forth as a discussion, a discussion in the future. Um, but I read recently read a, an article by Naomi Klein about disaster capitalism, and then Rebecca Solnit has written something really similar. And both of them are kind of talking about uh, times of change, crisis being times of uh, where really things can really change. Duh. Um, but you know, terrible things. And also it's a chance for like really amazing things to happen. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about what, you know, what this moment is doing to education and to higher education 
And we all know that there have been so many, I mean, there's so many flaws, big, big problems in higher education. And I think, but I also think that there's been a lot of, of progress in higher education in the past 10 or 15 years with, um, so I think that I've been thinking through how to talk about this. It's teasing out, not the baby with the bathwater, going forward with, you know, the changes that are going to present themselves over the next couple months. But going forward, I guess my main message is that um, I think com continuing to communicate with each other and going forward with like, you know, not letting fear drive our decisions. I mean, you know, some of us are going to lose jobs. People we know are going to lose jobs. People are getting sick. I mean, it, it is a really, really scary time on so many levels. Um, but I feel also that we are, we're not like health professionals, but I think as educators and as artists, we're, these, these are moments where, where I think what we do is extra important. And so I, I guess I just wanna throw this out as a way of kind of um, putting that in the conversation and just putting forth ideas of thinking about how we, how we create solidarity in this, in this time. Um, I hope to be more eloquent about that, but, but one, and one last thing I've been thinking about is um, I posted something about Joseph Albers and I was thinking about getting back to some of the basics of art education. And, um, you know, there's some modernist traditions that we've passed, we've gone past, but there are a lot of really key ideas in his philosophy. And he came out of a crisis, like he, the basis of, of what we do are, you know, Black, Black Mountain College and Yale School of Art were developed by someone who escaped a huge crisis. And I guess that's just, that's my, that's my Andy Rooney moment right now. So, um, and I wanna, I hope to continue to engage in these kinds of conversations with people. All right, I'm done now. Well, I, I wanted to like think like, there was something that happened. Uh, you know, I'm I'm teaching the seniors. Uh, obviously, they're disappointed in all of the, the the loss of their exhibition and so on. And we've channeled that into their ex into a, a publication. So we're kicking in some money. They raise some money. They raise a considerable amount of money for their show, for catering, for all kinds of things. And I'm I I'm a lurker, I guess, on the group chat. I don't participate, but they invited me. And they determined last night that they wanted to take a quarter of the money that they had raised, and instead of adding pages to their um, to their catalog, that they would donate that to uh, the group that's making masks for protective equipment. So that's students who are, you know, in debt, uh, taking out debt to do this, and they're taking money that they raised to do that. So, like, there there is a solidarity moment here. Uh, and it's coming from, you know, it's coming from the, 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 the students that we have the privilege of being able to teach. Sama said she had something to add. Jump in, Sama. Thank you. Um, I, I really uh, want to uh, add on to that because what Betsy had said, because it's so important. I just got out of a meeting um, with my director that I asked for because I'm also very concerned. I know what happened in the last uh, economic collapse in the United States, um, and it was really the largest transfer of wealth in our nation, right, um, to these corporations. And uh, I'm concerned with some of the things that we are receiving from the president, the provost office, and I think it's extremely important that faculty engage right now with their directors, with their deans, organize as faculty to ask the really important questions. What happens in times like this is that the, the advisors that kind of come into academia usually come from corporations. And uh, articles like this that I'm posting in the chat right now um, really freak me out. Like the bailout is just the star why higher ed needs to build a more sustainable model. And it's, it's language that is, is anti-research. Um, and uh, what what we might do in the immediate could be these things that get uh, solidified over time. And I, I have concerns that the U of A has a, a task force, a financial task force now implemented that is 93% upper administration. It's got basically no faculty input, a couple of figures here and there. And I, and I think it's very important for us as a school of art to organize ourselves, to, to ask that our dean come into our meetings, to have our questions and know how these questions, like when these first rounds of cuts come to be, 
how they are going to affect us, who makes the decisions of how these are going to be affected and how that works down the line. I mean, one of the things that we received today was, uh, I'm not sure if this is 100% yet, but any graduate student that has accepted, that has not yet accepted our offer, uh, we should rescind the financial offer because we want to it's couched in language that we want to support the graduate students that are here, but there are so many things about this that are problematic. Those could be permanent graduate GTA positions that are gone later on that go to, to adjuncts. And this kind of language, I know the last time we went through a recession, they eliminated faculty, they eliminated staff, and then they brought in Uber deans and we got more bloat on the top. So I, I think it's extremely important that, that we, we, although we can't get answers to everything, that we demand transparency, that we organize as faculty, that we want to be part of that conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Sama. Thank you. So we are at a point where we can transition to um, questions um, related to what Tom had to share with us with um, 